All right, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is uh, Lawrence Funderburg, and uh, my nickname is uh, Mr. Fundy. So um, the first three letters of my, my last name spell fun. So whatever I'm talking, even I'm only have 30 minutes or working with young people or adults, I try to make it fun, right? I want to make it interactive, so it's going to be a lot of interaction here. All right, now, um, the title of my message is Fiscally Fit Fathers or Fiscally Fit Mothers, Emotionally Balanced Men or Women. And um, what I talk to people about is that no matter how much money you have, the key is you got to be in control of your emotions. And particularly for us as black folks, emotions have really, really, really hurt us. And if we never know who we are emotionally, how are we ever going to achieve financial freedom? Okay? So that's what I'm going to really talk about. Okay, that's what I'm going to really talk about. And um, finances and emotions go hand in hand. They go together. Now, I'm going to um, go through. I got this big gym bag here. And most people in life, we carry this big gym bag around, and we have all these different things in our gym bag, right? All these different things, our personal hang-ups and how we were treated and not having this and not having that. We carry all this around. Now, for me, there were three things. I say the three Bs how I was able to make it. So I grew up uh, on the west side of Columbus. I grew up in this neighborhood called Sullivan Gardens Housing Projects, which was probably the roughest, toughest, baddest, meanest, meanest neighborhood of all of Columbus. I grew up in a house full of women. I have three older sisters and a single parent mom. That was rough growing up in a house full of women. My goodness. I got pink on because, you know, to show my love for obviously growing up, uh, being influenced by, by, by women. Now, there were three Bs that I focused on to make it. The first one was the Bible, right? So I'm six foot nine, but there's a man that I put my faith and trust in. I call him the big man upstairs. That's the Lord, right? That was the first B. Now, there was another B, books. So um, most people know me as a basketball player, but what most people don't know is that Lawrence Funderburg has always cared more about education, about his intellectual abilities than his physical abilities, right? And at any given time, I'm reading between seven and 10 books. And what they say about black folks, if you don't want them to know something, what? Put it in a book. It in a book. Yeah. We have to read. We've got to challenge our kids. We've got to make our kids, we're making them read all kinds of books this summer, right? Oliver Twist and all these different things. They have to expand their mind. Summer is not just for chilling out. You got to expand your mind. You got to learn because you're competing not against someone on Mount Vernon Avenue or Livingston, you're competing against somebody in India, in Brazil. Our world is global. So we got to be up to speed when it comes to education. Now, obviously, my third B was basketball, right? Basketball. This is the money ball, so we're going to talk about money. But those were the three Bs. Now, there was a B that I didn't have in my life, and it's being emotionally balanced. My emotions were all over the place, right? Balance. I didn't have balance. I didn't have balance emotion. And if you play sports, you got to have really good balance skills. If you want to deal with your money and your finances, you got to have good balance skills. You got to be emotionally balanced, right? If you want to handle your money the right way, you have to have the right most. So I didn't have balance in my life. Now, um, I'm going to talk to you about the brain. Okay, we're going to just talk about the brain. And the brain is powerful. Now, my, my uh, education, I uh, played professional basketball for 11 years. I played for the Chicago Bulls. I played for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, I played overseas for three years. And I played at Ohio State. Now, um, I got into the brain because my son had this issue. He had this issue. It's called sensory integration disorder. And um, it's not really on the autism spectrum, but a lot of kids who have autism have sensory integration disorder. And what this is, is it basically means that your brain and your body are not on the same page. They're disconnected. He would try to catch a football or a basketball or whatever, a baseball, and he'd cross his hands or he'd fall down all the time. And we didn't know what was going on with our son, but we went on this campaign to save him, right, so that he can have a normal life. And we refused to believe the prophecy that he wasn't going to make it. So I am very fascinated with the brain. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the brain. Now, there's an area of the brain called the cerebral cortex. It's a really thing, but there's four areas there. 
Now, there's an area of the brain called the prefrontal cortex or the frontal lobe. This is responsible for planning, organizing, problem solving, weighing consequences of your decisions, right? Your personality, your impulse control, that's all right here. Now, there's another part of the brain called your temporal lobe. This is where you auditory, you process information, you hear words. Also comes to your emotions, right? Now, for black folks, when it comes to the temporal lobe, there's an area of the brain called the amygdala. It's called the fight or flight. And for many of us, we operate continually when it comes to fear, right? And if we are fearful, if we're afraid, we're paralyzed. And that is definitely the case when it comes to money, right? The temporal lobe. Now, there's an area of the brain back here. So the frontal, frontal lobe is right here. Temporal lobe is right here. And then you have this area of the brain back here called the occipital lobe. Occipital lobe is not only for seeing, for sight, but it's also for vision. And a lot of us don't have a vision for our future, right? So we are not going to be able to reach our goals because we don't have vision, but also motion of objects and, and different things. Now, there's a, there's a big thing in the area of the brain. It's called the parietal lobe. It's right here. This is where, as black folks, we operate the most, a parietal lobe, right? This is responsible for your rhythm, right, your movement, your sports, right? We got swag. I got a little swag, too. I can dance. They used to call me El Boogie back in the day, all right? Now, we operate a lot there. And what I always say is a lot of us have athletic rhythm and musical rhythm, but we don't have financial rhythm. We don't. We swagged out, but where's our monetary swag? Now, when it comes to the parietal lobe, all right, and you should write this down, okay? The first one is going to be sensation, all right, sensation. Sensation. Now, when it comes to cessation, this is what you touch, what you taste, what you smell, right? What you feel, what you hear, all right? Sensation. Now, when it comes to sensation, let me ask you a question. Are your senses, what you see, what you taste, what you touch, helping or hurting your financial cause? Right? <laughs> Think about that for a second. Our senses, right? And a lot of times, what gets us as black folks, when we see something, we hear something, right? That really affects our financial well-being, big time, all right? Now, the next one, all right, is perception. Perception. And perceptions are all about what? Feelings, right? Most of us, we really, really, really struggle when it comes to perception, all right? Now, Here's my question to you. How do you feel financially? How do you feel financially? Think about that for a second. So I'm watching you, and I study body language, and when I ask that question, you just communicate it to me, Which right? Right? Six feet under if you want to go okay. Right, right. And, and the, the beauty is, no matter your present situation, you can always get better. Right. You can always go up. We can always go to the other level. When you say it's coming up, you can always go there. Yeah. And that's why your emotions are very, very important to help you in that process. Okay? Now, here's a big one right here, orientation. Orientation. Here's a question I'm going to ask you. Where do you stand financially? Now, think about that. Yeah, think about that. Where do you stand financially? Now, I always tell people, a lot of us, we have a phone. And then I don't use this phone for when I'm looking at trying to get somewhere. I, I like to map it out in my mind when it comes to directions. And a lot of us, our financial GPS is all messed up. <laughs> it's all messed up. And I tell people, look, if you don't know where you stand, when you go through and you think about your GPS, it's trying to locate where you are on this phone to get to where you're going, your destination. If you don't know where you stand, how are you going to know how to get to your destination? Mm -hmm. right. And in most time, most of us, we, 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 we understand right rhythm. We, we understand. And we always say, do you feel me? Do you feel me? Do you feel me? But what about financially? Where do you stand financially? What about your economic orientation? You understand what I'm saying? Now, 
this next one right here, this is all in the parietal lobe right here, is navigation. This is all right here. All this right here is responsible for that. And what they found out, too, between women and men, they found out that women, women typically have a smaller parietal lobe back here than men, but women have a, 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 a bigger frontal lobe and they also have a bigger corpus callosum, which is the bridge between the left and the right hemisphere. That's why women can multitask and men, <laughs> we can't. We struggle, just the task, okay? So it's how God made us. It's how he wired us. And I always tell people when I walk around, I'll see most of the problems that we have as folks, as black folks in our community, it's all up here. It's all in our mind. It's all here. And this affects how we operate. Now, navigation, right? Here's a question I'm going to ask you. Are you moving toward or away from your financial goals? Think that. Think about that, okay? Are you moving toward or away from your financial goals? That's critically important. All right. The next one is destination. Destination, how likely are you to reach your financial goals? And I always love coming in and love working with our people because I tell people, look, it doesn't matter where you stand, right? I grew up for 18 years on welfare. I carry a food stamp in my pocket to this day. I carry a food stamp. This is always with me because this is a constant reminder of poverty. And I hated being poor, right? The stench of poverty is always on me. It's a smell I never want to leave. I want to always remember how I grew up. This is a constant reminder. They stopped food stamps many, many years ago. So your destination is how likely are you to reach your goals? All right, now here's a big one. And they got a lot of movies out now about this. Emancipation. I love that, I love that phrase. Harriet Tubman, she said, I freed a thousand but I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were what? Slaves. You have to know you're in bondage in order to be free from it. Come on now, you know I'm talking right. You know I'm talking right. You know I'm talking right. We need to understand where we are, right, in order to break free so we can have a legacy for our kids. I have two kids. So that they know that the legacy that I, how I grew up is not gonna be their legacy. We got to change that right now, right? Emancipation is, are you really, really serious about financial freedom? That's the question. That's the question. Now, I'm going to shift gears, and I'm going to really go into emotions now. And we carry all this around. And I'm going to challenge you, and I want you to really think about this, all right? So we have six emotions, OK? Six emotions. All right. Four of them are thought of as negative. One is neutral. And then one positive. All right. So I'm going to go in my gym bag and I want I'm going to challenge you. And I want you to think about this. OK, I want you to think about this. All right. So I got my big gym bag. The first emotion I'm going to pull out is fear. Now, I want to tell you, I'm going to tell you my story. I'm going to go through my story. Now, there were a lot of fears that I had growing up. One of the fears that I had growing up is my mom would send me to the grocery store with food stamps, and I always were, was afraid that somebody was going to see me carrying those food stamps. Now, they would come in the store from my neighborhood, and I would see them. I will get out of line and walk around the store until they left. Now, in Sullivan Gardens, everybody's on welfare, right? Not just you, but I want you to think about this. I want you to think about one fear you had. I want you to think about what is your greatest fear when it comes to money or finances. Write that down. What's your greatest fear? I want you to think about that. What's your greatest fear? And for sometimes as a kid, maybe your greatest fear is you're afraid of the dark. Or you're afraid of somebody bullying you, or you're afraid of, or you're, or you're afraid, fearful that you're not going to be accepted. But you need to understand, you need to deal with your emotions. I always tell people, don't hold on to your emotions. You got to let them go, because when you hold on to stuff, you're never going to be free. So I want you to think about, what is your greatest fear financially? If you want to, I want to hear from you. 
Anybody want to share? Your, what is your greatest fear financially? Anybody? Anybody want to share? I don't want to make all my money and spend it on everything because okay. that's like poverty. Okay. Money. So that's your greatest fear, making money and then blowing it and spending it right away. Anybody else? Another fear? My, my greatest fear is yep. losing my house. Ooh, okay. 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 Um, I grew up um, somewhat slightly kind of middle class. Middle class, okay. In ground pool in the backyard. Mm -hmm. But my dad lost the house. Mm -hmm. And so one thing to this day, I get that mortgage paid first and foremost. That's right. Okay, and I, I just always say to myself, I will never lose a house like my dad did. Right. You're, you're, exactly, you're exactly right. And we have these fears that we hold on to. Anybody else got another fear? What's your greatest fear? Some people have a fear of running out of money or, or not enough. Or, or guess what? You ready for this? Not being able to retire. Yeah, working. And that's what's, what's going on. Okay? So your greatest fear. All right. The next one. All right. And I had a lot of trouble with this. Anger. Anger. And usually when people think about anger, your whole body changes. Your whole body, your whole body language cha changes. And for a lot of us, we're angry, and we don't even know why we're angry. So I grew up with my mom, single-parent household. A lot of anger my mom had, you know what I'm saying? And it's true. Men wouldn't treat her right, you know, not having enough money, you know. And you grow up around all that, and you absorb that. That's why I always say as parents, we got to be very careful of the emotions that we display in front of our kids. Let's, let's be honest here, okay? So I want you to think about... What is the thing that you've been most angry about when it comes to money, okay? When it comes to money. And for me, growing up, I was very angry when people used to treat me like I was invisible. And when you're poor and they treat you like you're the scum of the earth, that still bothers me. That bothers me. The people treated me that way. They treated me like I was the scum of the earth, like I don't mean nothing to you because I'm poor. I am a somebody. And then when I became a somebody, you know what? I used to treat people like they, was, they were invisible. Because you treated me that way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pay you back. But we got to be very careful that we don't have anger because that's when we get revenge. We do that a lot. We say, okay, look, I got this, and you didn't believe in me. Now you look at me coming down the neighborhood or whatever. You see me. But we got to be, be very careful how that's going to sabotage our own financial future, trying to pay somebody back. Come on now. Come on now. So I want you to think about what is your greatest, what are you, what are, what are you most angry about? And sometimes it could be if you're a husband and a wife or a couple, whatever, that one spouse or may spend more money or some, something. We all have our hangups when it comes to anger. Anybody want to share what are you most angry about when it comes to money? Anybody? It could be like, maybe when you got a job or you got fired from a job or whatever the case. Yes. My grown kids always want to borrow money. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, Absolutely. And don't pay it back. That's right. I've, lo I've loaned thousands of dollars, and uh, hardly anybody ever paid me back, for sure. Anybody else? Anger? Okay. Disgust. Disgust. Now, growing up in poverty, and we had it, we had the trash cans right in the backyard, and I had the task of taking the trash out. And I hated the fact that I would have to take the trash out and there'd be diapers by the trash can and the smell. And in, our, in, the, in the neighborhood, uh, alcoholics would use the trash can as a bathroom. And the disgust and that smell. And I think about that. And I said to myself, I'm never going to live in an environment like this, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to help as many get out of here. So when I want you to think about it, what, were you, what have you been most disgusted about when it comes to Finances. Some people have been disgusted about people who, if you're poor and someone's rich and they, and you, and they, and they don't help, or, or, or I tell people, look, you can never become what you hate. If you hate the wealthy, you're never going to become wealthy. Right? right. right? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to share what have you been most disgusted about when it comes to money? Anything you think of? Mmm, yeah, that's right. To work hard, to work a lot, and not have nothing to show for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And something comes up. Yeah. And you're broke again. How do you get off that treadmill? How do you get off that treadmill? That's what we're talking about now. Being understanding, having a game plan. Now, 
Now on this next one, sadness. Now, I saw my father three times my whole life. And my mom would tell me all the time, well, my father, I saw him three times. I never saw my father again at the age of nine. And my mom would say, son, son, your dad's coming to see you. And I would look outside. I would look outside, and I would wait all day. And he never showed up. He never showed up. He never kept his word. Never. And when he came over, he'd take me to the corner store. He was drunk. He was an alcoholic. I'm in a car who's a man, a man who's legally drunk in stunned silence. What does a father say to a son he doesn't want? What does a son say to a father he doesn't know? And he buy me some candy. I hate candy even now. I don't even like candy. I'm your son. And you treat me like this? I'm 45, and it still bothers me to this day. I got two kids. Whatever they, when, it, when our kids got anything going on, I'm there. And my son, same age, about the last time I saw my father, he asked me, he said, Daddy, how come your father didn't love you? How do I answer that? 40, he died alcoholic. Did I go to his funeral? No way. I don't know him. And you know what? He died at 40, and he always had in that brown paper bag a what? A 40 ounce. 40 ounce. <laughs> and you're very fortunate to have a father. If you have a father in your life, you're very fortunate. Now, so I want you to think about that. What made you most sad when it comes to money? Like you said, running out of money or not having enough, or maybe kids for Christmas, not having money to buy them something for Christmas. We had to depend on charity newsies and others. And the thing about emotions, no matter how old you get, you're still there, and it still brings back the same physiological feelings way back. Don't matter. Don't matter the time. That's your brain. But you have to be in control of that. So sadness. Anybody? Sadness. What made you most sad? Something coming about money or, or, or anything. Right. For Christmas. That's right. That's right. Not when you know you at least had something. That's right. Like if I got a thousand dollars, I want to spend. You know, you'd be like, I gotta mm -hmm. pay me seven hundred or something. But I got to get for my kids. So sometimes black families would say, hold that bill. That's right. And we gonna get for these babies right now. That's right. And That's that right. That makes you sad. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, we had two incomes. Right. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially when you have kids. And I always tell people, especially when you're married, you got to be on the same page financially. I've been married 17 years. Right. And I watch every dime. And I tell my wife, as soon as you come in the house, I need the receipt. It don't matter. I made millions and millions of dollars playing basketball. That's irrelevant. I'm not going back there. She grew up in the middle class. I grew up in poverty. My wife's from Chillicothe, Ohio. I married a country girl, country, a sister from, who's from the country. Now, the next one, surprise. Surprise. And this is neutral, yep. So negative, all right, fear, anger, sadness, disgust. The neutral is surprise or shock. It can be kind of, it can be positive, it can be negative, right? Neutral. What was always a surprise to me growing up in the hood is that a lot of the guys that, I saw in my neighborhood, they would play dice, the ghetto dice game. They would play dice. And then you think, man, the odds of you winning are very, very low. And you're spending this money on that. And a lot of us, too, we play the lottery now. 
And the odds are very, very low for us to win there. Let's be honest, okay? And the thing that was surprising is when I used to watch those guys play, I saw a guy almost get killed for $2, a side bet. That was shocking to me to actually see that that actually happened. So for you, my question is, what have you been most shocked about when it comes to your financial situation? And I got you, and I see you're thinking. You're thinking. I'm saying I'm watching you. I'm, I'm thinking. You're telling me a lot about. Yes. I'm, I'm in school right now, and I have a lot of debt. You got a lot of debt. Okay. Obama's loan forgiveness. Loan forgiveness, right. If you go into that for, yep, yeah, 10 I years. Yeah, 84000 now it only be 5000 Okay. Okay. So I'm surprised and shocked because I've been paying for school on fake money. Mm. Now I don't have to pay it all back. Yep. Thank God for that. Yep, for sure. And the key is to have a game plan. So my thing is to have a game plan, to have a playbook. All right? Now, the last one is happy. And I see your whole countenance just changed. When I say happy, happy, right? In this movie, there was a movie, and I always tell folks, there was a movie, all right? It's called uh, Inside Out. Now, we think, we think of these movies are only applied to kids. That's wrong. These movies help adults. I think about all kind of things and stuff. Nemo and Shark Tale, right? Right, moving on up to Jefferson's. Y'all remember the Jefferson's if you're old enough, you remember? So happiness. When have you been most happy? I remember one of the things where I was most happy, my mom, she bought me a, a basketball for Christmas. And it was winter, and then I, had, I went outside, didn't have any gloves. I, I put socks on as my gloves to go outside and play. And I pl practiced, and I played on that basketball. I was Dr. J playing against Larry Bird, and I was Kareem, and I was Magic Johnson. That brought a lot of happiness to me. So I want you to think about it for you. When have you been the most happy, happiest when it comes to your finances? Think about that. When you're able to pay your bills and have money left over, okay? Okay. Now I'm gonna um, uh, have you ask me some questions. And one of the things that I do is because with 30 minutes, that's not enough time for me. And what I am is I help people develop a life and a financial plan. And I just talked about emotions, which are the key part of you being able to survive financially. But a lot of us too, we need to think about having a playbook or a game plan, right? The finals are going on right now. When they plan that game, before the game, every day leading up to that, they're going over their playbook, right? This is what we want to do. Well, if this happens, if somebody gets in foul trouble, this is what we're going to do. For us as black folks, we a lot of times react. We just react to whatever comes our way. We don't have a game plan. We don't have a playbook to keep ourselves in the game. And that is the cr critical, 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 critical piece. Yes. So this, this right here, yeah. So the state of black wealth, this is where we are. All right. So net worth, which is a measure of wealth. So most of us, we think of wealth as in how much money you make. Ain't wrong. Net worth is the difference between your assets, right, what you have, so your cars, your clothes, your, your house, your savings accounts, your investment accounts, those are your assets. Minus your liabilities, your debts, credit card debt, car loans, home loans, right? Student loans, okay? So when you take your assets, everything you owe, own, and you subtract what you owe, you get the difference. That's called your net worth. Now, the median net worth, which is in the middle for black folks, so back in 2009, we have whites here, $192,000. Hispanics, 24,000. African Americans, 19,000. Now, this was in the midst of the economic recession. Now, 2013, in the midst of the recovery, whites, their uh, net worth dropped to 142,000. Hispanics, 14,000. Blacks, 11,000. Now, and a lot of that had to do with whites, their net worth didn't drop as much as because they didn't have all their money tied up in a house. They had money in the stock market, the market recovered and stuff like that. And then for black folks, if we take away the family car, our net worth would drop to $1,700. Come on now, come on now, we come too far to go back so soon. 
Come on. Our ancestors did too much for us to be in the situation that we are in right now. Come on now. You know I'm talking right. Yes, sir. So, what's, so in, your, in your experience, what have you seen the big difference between where, where, where does the divide start? Right. Like between the queen whites, queen Hispanics, Absolutely. Where, where does that start? Yeah, a lot of us, I always tell us as black folks, we want to look the part instead of be the part. Right. We, want, we want to be fly, we want to be fresh. And I'm cool with that. I always tell people, look, there are certain things you have to have non-negotiables. Meaning, like for me, because we never had a nice car, I'm always going to have a nice car. Right. It doesn't have to be new, but it's going to be nice, mm -hmm. right? That's me. Those are non-negotiables. It may be for get your hair done or get your nails did or whatever the case. You can have non-negotiables, but you got to save. You got to have a game plan. You got to start investing. And particularly as white folks, they invest. When we have uh, retirement accounts at work, black folks, we borrow against them. We don't match them. We don't put money into them. So that's a big thing. And we want things that we can touch and we can hold on to, houses and cars and clothes. So those things are abstract. Stocks and company, bonds, and private equity. They're, they're, they're abstract to us. Abstract concepts really struggle with our kids in, in math. I love abstract concepts, but that's where we struggle. Now, when it comes to the percentage of wealth in America, whites own about 90%, Hispanics 2.3%, and then blacks 2.6%. Now, we have discretionary buying power of about a trillion dollars. And yet, Look at our financial situation. Now, this is not just people who don't have a lot if they're lower income. This is the middle income. This is people who make a lot of money, professional athletes. I saw it all day, every day. And a lot of that is because they never dealt with who they are emotionally. And if you never deal with who you are emotionally, you're going to always struggle. I'm just going to be honest with you. I tell it like it. I'm a straight shooter. And we got to have a game plan. So I wanted to focus on emotions because I think that's the critical piece. But I want to, if you are interested, you take my card and we can always do a, 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 a game plan to actually help you with your financial situation. Because we got to think about our legacy, right? Our kids. We have to. Who's going to do it for us? It's not going to be a politician. It's not going to be anybody. It's going to be us. Any last minute questions that you have? Any questions that you have? on anything that I share, and, then I'll, and I can tell you if you want to think about certain rules of thumb when it comes to money, okay, you ready for this? When it comes to savings, how much money you should have saved, okay, how much money you should have saved, very, very important. You should have three to six months, three to six months of savings. All right, so what that means is, all right, let's say you're, you work and let's say your take-home pay, let's say is $3,000. So 3,000 times 3 is 9,000, all right, to $18,000 you should have in an account, like a savings account, right, or a checking account. Is that like your personal? Your personal account, yeah, or, or your joint account. Now, most people, most Americans, most Americans, to cover emergencies, most Americans don't even have $1,000. Okay. So that's just savings. And then go, go ahead. No, no, I was just asking. So, no, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just savings. You got a question? Um, you can finish with your team, but I do have a question. Okay. All right. So savings. So we've got to think about saving money. And then here's what we say. We always say, I want to save for emergencies, right? Now, for folks who, particularly whites who, who, who think about building wealth, they don't just think about emergencies. What they got to think, they think of it, they think of it's not just an emergency fund. Right. They consider it an opportunity yeah. fund. Right. Hello? Vacation. Opportunity fund, right? To invest, to do supplemental services or whatever the case may be. So you got to have three to six months. So as a financial planner, there's, there's three critical areas that people got to have. One is they got to have the savings. The second one is, you ready for this? Life insurance. Most of us black folks, we do not have life insurance. How much life insurance should you have? You ready for this? Okay, let's say, you're, let's say, you're, let's say you're, um, your income for the year, your income for the year, let's just say, just round numbers, is $100,000. Two, two parent income, you make $100,000. You should have between seven 
to 10 times your annual salary in insurance. So this means you should have between 700,000 to a million dollars in life insurance. And I always tell my wife, look, if something happens to me, I want your life to continue. I can't come back. I can't come back. I'm not coming back. You got to keep living your life. That's what this is for. I can't come back. And whenever I talk like this, my wife, she starts getting sad. But your life has to go on. And for most of us, we don't even have insurance to bury people. We don't have insurance to bury people. And then we have kids. What about going to college? What about the lifestyle that you're used to? How do you replace your lost income? Right. And in life insurance is not very expensive. Term insurance is not very expensive. But a lot of us, we let policies lapse and we don't have the insurance. And then we wonder we're scrambling around doing fundraisers or fish fries to bury somebody. Come on now. Let's 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 keep it honest. All right. Now, that's the second one. The third thing is estate planning. Now, as black folks, let me tell you something. You need to get a will. You need to get a will, meaning that if something happens, who gets what? And somebody says, I don't even have a lot. Look, if you got a house, if you got a car, or if you got clo- if you got certain things, believe me, you got it. And people will fight. I've seen it. They fight. They'll fight. So a will. You need a basic will. Now, you also need something that's called a health care power of attorney. Two people are driving. Let's say they get in a car accident. Both of them are incapacitated. Who's going to make decisions on that person's behalf to, for life support or whatever? That happened to me with my mom. I'm having a meeting. My sister calls me hysterically and saying, you got to get here. You got to hurry up. You got to go. You got to hurry up. Mom's about to die. So I rushed to the hospital, Mount Carmel East. They could not get started until I was there because I had her health care power of attorney. This has happened, right? And that we have to have these documents in place, a will, health care power of attorney. The next one is a financial power of attorney. So you need a will, you need a financial power of attorney. I mean, a health care power of attorney, you need a financial power of attorney. If something happens, two people, car accident, you still got bills to pay. Dude, they don't really care that you're in a, in a in vegetative state somewhere. You got to pay the bills. This happens, folks. And for us, again, as black folks, a lot of times we react to what's happening. So those are the three areas, the savings you need, life insurance, and you need a state plan. And there's many, many other factors when it comes to investing. How much money do you need to retire? Here's one. I want you to get your calculators. I want you to think about this. Put in the amount of money when you go to retire, when you go to retire, how much money do you want to live on in today's dollars? Okay, how much money you want to live on in today's dollars? Okay, and I'll use the the simple thing again, $100,000. Okay, how much money, how how big should your money bag be? Now, so think about this for a second. You got got vacations, you got different things that you want to do, right? You want to travel, you got healthcare expenses, which are going to be a lot. If you don't take care of yourself right now, now multiply that number by 25. Go ahead, multiply that number by 25. And that is how much money you're going to need to avoid running out of money. Now, I'm going to tell you all something right now. Social Security and Medicare, I tell people, if you're under 50, I'm 45. If you're under 50, it might not be around for you. Let's, I'm just going to be honest with you. It might not be around, or you're not going to get much from that. So you need to start. I, tell, I got big hands. Your financial future is going to be in your own hands, black folks. You got to start taking care of yourself. Stop depending on someone else to take care of you or someone saying they go. No, no, no. You're going to have to take care of yourself. And that's my spiel. Any questions? Any questions? Anything? Anything? I know y'all got a lot. I know y'all got a lot. And it's free. This is free advice, too. Free because I charge 150 an hour. I wouldn't charge all that. But that's what I, that's what I charge. And that's, that's cheap. That's cheap considering that somebody will pay an electrician. So our painter, two, three hundred dollars. I'm helping you with your financial future to help you to protect your legacy. And you want to question my fees? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I do. I do what these black people do. You know how we get in debt. I got the cash place. Yeah, the cash place, cash, cash advance place. No, you're right. And you're and you're paying all that interest, and that's interest working against you. And what whites do, interest works for them. It works for them, but it works against us. Come on now, all right? Poor white people. Yeah, they're in the same boat. Yeah, 
There, there's, there's, a lot, there's, a lot, there's a lot of Appalachian, particularly Southern Ohio. A lot, there's a lot of poverty in Southern Ohio. My wife's from Chillicothe. It's very, very, very poor down there. Trust me. All right. So any questions? And you can stay. All right. So and you can st stay afterwards and ask me any questions you want. All right. Thank you for your time. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. OK. All right. Thank you.